Okay guys, so patch 1.8 hit today. I'm not going to run through the full patch notes, there's really no point to this. I just wanted to address some of the questions that people are going to have regarding one dagger. Ultimately, were we nerfed in this patch? Short answer, no. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, you can all uh, bugger off now and do whatever you want. But no, if you want to understand why one dagger isn't nerfed, I'll just cover off a couple of points for you in the patch. If anything, we're only going to be strong when it comes to large scale and arena as well. Um, there are some classes that got significantly buffed in terms of small scale and it's going to be a bit more of a pain to deal with but ultimately one dagger is in a stronger position as of today than it was yesterday. So first and foremost the big issue that everybody's worried about is the karmic haze change. So they fixed the issue where it would ignore spread chance in some cases. Now people are understandably concerned about this so much so that people have been testing karmic haze over the last week thinking that the patch had already hit or that the change was already in the game and i've had some funny feedback from people where they've said oh my god since the karmic change has happened i'm missing way more spreads my sleeps aren't hitting as many people etc etc i find it hilarious because that can't have been the case the patch has only just hit today and the change has only just hit today essentially what this has done is brought karmic haze back to where it should be which is an 80% chance to spread all of your curses to multiple targets. This 80% is before you factor in weakened resistance because Karmic is a weak in itself. Once you're adding your weakened resistance, um, you're still looking at close to 100%, if not over a guaranteed chance of landing the Karmic on evasion, um, endurance, sorry, classes. So in terms of PvP, our focus should always be those priority targets, which are your bow staff, staff wand, um, bow wand. Those are the three main targets that we want to isolate in the back lines. This is why we dive the back lines and we don't just randomly sleep on the front. Those are the targets that we want to hit. Now, we're not going to notice an impact on this. I've done some testing already since the servers went live. You're not going to experience a big issue. In general, the karmic haze change is a neutral change from this perspective. However, it is also a net gain or a buff because of the chance, uh, the fact that it now ignores shield block when spreading. This is significant because you've probably experienced it in large scale playing one dagger where guilds are stationing tanks in the backline to disrupt any kind of diving that goes on. Um, I know from my experience personally, it was very easy for a tank to sit and block when I engaged, set up the sleep, and then they could shut down any follow up damage that I had. The fact that they can't do this now and that they're genuinely going to have a, a significant chance to actually eat that sleep along with the rest of the targets overall makes Karma Haze in a much stronger position than it was. I wouldn't worry about the fact that it doesn't have this guaranteed chance to spread. It was never a guaranteed chance to spread. It was still missing. It will still miss on evasion targets if they have their evasion high enough and your hit rating is not high enough. That's always going to be the case. It's going to remain the case in tier 2. It never made us weak, and it definitely doesn't make any significant difference today since the patch has gone live. The Ray of Disaster change pretty irrelevant unless you run that. Obviously, if you're running that in Arena, it's a good way of stacking poison up. It's a really good way of stacking poison from range, um, but ultimately it's not something that we use that much. The Swift Healing change, sharing the cooldown with Healing Touch, is irrelevant for us. However, this has a huge benefit when it comes to arena and large scale as well in terms of where we sit compared to the other one classes but i'll cover that in a moment slightly more time for punishment and in a debuff to shield block chance always good anything we can do to help mitigate that block chance on tanks again this is going to be something that we're more likely to run in small scale anyway so in arena is something that you'll find running burning time is something that gets done a lot so having this um, also reduce shield block chance is great for dealing with the tanks in arena, especially those great sword, sword and shields. We're very good at melting tanks, providing that we can get our dot damage up and that we can get the explosion to go through as well. So it's a nice change there. Clay Salvation, this along with the bow cleanse is huge that you're now able to completely remove a full stack of weaken. Prior to this change, it would only take off one. So if you had 20 stacks of poison, it would remove one poison. It was completely useless and nobody should have ever been <laughs> running weak in removal. This again is more of an arena um, element. This is something that now is going to get a lot more usage. Having weak in removal, be able to remove a full stack is a really good way of shutting down. Especially if you're against a team that only has one real debuff stacking class. 
that you're going to be able to remove that weaken. So things like if you're coming up against one crossbow, fantastic way of shutting them down now that they're going to be using poison again. Um, and again, against other one daggers as well. It's great to be able to remove that the stacks of curse. It's going to really hurt one dagger in that respect. Um, so coming up against other healers is always going to be a pain if they're able to use clay salvation to just cleanse that. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a pain. So I can see in arena poison being used a lot more, even though it's great damage addition to curse explosion, more so for its ability to cover the curse stacks. And essentially you're playing around with covering your weakens so that you do still get damage off with curse explosion and they can't just completely shut you down in that area of the game. But overall we're actually our biggest buff this patch comes from the changes to Longbow. Now Longbow got hurt really badly from a healing perspective so for Bow Wand because of this change to healing touch now sharing the cooldown with swift healing they're not going to be able to stack hots up um, significantly on multiple people and still swift heal off the back of it so having this shared cooldown is going to really hurt um, bow, bow wand in mass pvp and also in small scale in arena they got the benefit of purifying touch so now they can run purifying touch and they can also run a clay salvation so they do get the benefit of being able to double cleansed in a more effective way and the fact that purifying touch got the increase to the maximum effect stacks that can be removed is really really good so they're going to be able to cleanse off the cc effects and they're also going to be able to cleanse off the the damaging effects like we can with clay salvation but the absolute biggest change from our perspective in terms of large scale PvP, in terms of small scale PvP, is the nerf to Devoted Shield. So the effect's been changed. It no longer create has a chance to create a shield every time that they're hit by a weaken. It will only create a shield if they are hit at or below 30% health. And it's now up on a 60 second cooldown. This is so huge for mass PvP, it's going to be such a significant boon for us in terms of what we're able to do. Now, other classes like crossbows could take the poison off their build and still be able to bomb, whereas for us, we had no chance. Everything that we were looking to do was set up with weaken. All of our damage comes from weaken and our CC comes from weaken. When we were bombing the back lines, all of the bows were proc uh, procking their shields and there was nothing we could do about this. And those shields are significant. And the fact that if you're running a build like mine, where you set up the sleep into rotten ground, you bomb on top of that. The curses are reapplied, so they were getting double procs of shields from me as well. It was really, really, really painful to try and deal with any kind of longbow classes in PvP. Now, in game, the tooltip does say that they need to be hit with a weak and blow 30%. That, I believe, is still a tooltip error from Korea. It has been tested by people in the guild, and it isn't a case that you need to hit them with a weaken. The shield will proc if they're hit at 30% health or below. What this does mean, though, is you can bypass that shield. So the shield is only effective if they're getting hit by trickle damage below that 30%, or something that takes them from, say, 30% to 1% health. Um, if they're getting hit at 30% or below, then they will proc that shield. But still, a 60-second cooldown is a huge change on there. The only other really big thing that can be a little bit of a pain for us comes more in terms of um, small scale PvP like Arena, and it's this change to serial firebombs. This 80% healing reduction for 6 second is ridiculously strong, and it's going to see things like Staff Wand become the new meta carry for Arena. Being able to cleanse fully um, the weakened stack on people, on multiple people, and also bring in a healing reduction, not to mention the extra damage buffs that they got as well. Um, we're going to see a lot more staff one climbing in arena, and if you're in a position to do so and you do like to play arena, it's probably going to be your go-to build. It's really easy to get set up with. You don't need a lot of points invested in staff to make this effective, and you can pretty much run the same gear that you're running anyway, and just pick up a staff um, instead of your daggers and go to town with that. I'm not going to touch on any of the other stuff. I mean, yeah, Greatsword got some more buffs. Yeah, it really needed it. But ultimately, it doesn't impact us in any meaningful way. Um, the changes to Crossbow frustrate Crossbow players a little bit. But ultimately, again, nothing that's too significant for us. 
I just wanted to cover off the fact that everybody feels that we were going to be hit really hard in this patch. We're not. It's not a big nerf. It's nothing you need to be worried about. If you've got any questions, drop it in the comment section. I'd love to hear all of your opinions on this as well. Thanks.